Fasten your seat belts. It's going to be a bumpy night. But tell me, Eddie, is that a rabbit in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? So hello hello everyone welcome it is basically a combination discussion stream slash birthday hangout because today is my birthday and you know what is like you know it's rather fitting that we're talking at least the first film in one of my favorite action movie franchises of all time and that is lethal weapon the first lethal weapon <laughs> film from 1987 Happy uh, birthday. so thank you <laughs> So, and I was talk, I'll be going over some of this trivia um, as we are going along in, like basically throughout talking about the movie. But uh, I like I knew that uh, the original script was a bit, well, I thought it was a bit darker mm -hmm. than uh, originally the the movie that like the final version that we get. I didn't realize how fucking dark <laughs> it was. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't realize how fucking dark it was. <laughs> Because it's like one of the situations where it's like, well, I'm like, you know, as, as appreciative I, as I am of Shane Black's creativity, like he's like, a, he, is a, he is a good writer. All right. He's a good filmmaker. Not with the jokes he wrote in Predator. <laughs> well, no, I, well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm joking. It's, it's yeah, a joke. It's yeah. Joke. So I basically, <laughs> but like, as appreciative I am as, as, of him as a filmmaker, when I was reading like the trivia where like what the, some of the original scenes called for. In his original script, I was like, I'm thankful Richard Donner stepped in and said, we, this is like, this is too dark. Like, we have to yeah. kind of scale it back a little bit. Where it's like, you know, we're not completely removing the darkness from the movie, obviously, because it's an action movie. All right, there's going to be death. and not Stephen man. King. Yes. <laughs> he he brought in another gentleman by the name of Jeffrey Bohm, who cut out certain scenes and then revamped the, like, basically revamped the character's and added a touch of levity in the dialogue in some of the scenes. So that so basically the final version we get is pretty much not as it's not a collab between Shane Black and Jeffrey Bohm, but at least a we have those two to thank. An interaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically without Shane Black's original script, we would not have the process leading up to the final version we get of Lethal Weapon. So but anyway, before I say hello to the chat, we, before we get into talking about Lethal Weapon and some of the trivia I read, uh, Orange Chat, let everybody know where they can find you and all that fun stuff. Well, uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Orange Hat two one eight five, but also you can find me at my new or my finally fucking restored uh, original uh, Twitter account, Orange Hat Reviews at Orange or the word orange in the uh at is without an a so it's orange at reviews but uh yeah that's finally back folks you can also find me on Mars channel twice a month uh for the ones and twos you can find me on her on my channel tomorrow where we discuss our singles uh this week and next week the first one being the accountant mm -hmm. one of my top favorite movies period um that, that so, movie or, actually was better than I thought it would be when I originally saw it. So I was like, I'm actually impressed with what they were able to achieve. They're trying to get a sequel going. But yeah. Uh, Friday nights are Orange Hat Uncensored. Uh, Sunday nights are the weekly recap. Tuesday afternoons are the April franchise thoughts theme streams where I give my thoughts on different franchises. Uh, the one that I recently did was, I think it was uh, Aliens and then, oh, Rambo. Uh, next week is the Terminator franchise. Yes, I give my thoughts even on the terrible ones. Um, Barroom Podcast at 9 p.m. that no or Tuesday nights on Society Reviews channel. And yeah, other than that, I'm also, I also mod for OMB Reviews is, or Reviews Tuesday streams so other than that yeah let's have some fun on here all right okay and i'm gonna say hello to the chat before we get into talking about the film from the top i see trey says hey mara hope you had a good birthday well it's on hump day so take that for what you will pretty much uh the opens on the only consistent franchise i'd say the only con one of the few consistent action franchises um while there, are weaker, while there are weaker additions yeah. Like basically, like your know, entries, I should say, in the Lethal Weapon 
franchise as a whole, they themselves are like, like they're not they're not bad or anything they like that. They managed to still keep still enjoyable. They're still watchable. Yeah, they managed to keep the core cast. Yes, that is something that I like. They managed mm -hmm. to keep the two originals, their significant others and whatnot, and the captain and the shrink. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great. Uh, Giggles and Bits, this movie is a classic, I agree. And yes, for those who are saying it's a Christmas movie in the chat, I wholeheartedly agree with that as well. It is a Christmas movie, much like Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And the people using the logic of it's not a Christmas movie, it just happens to take place on Christmas. Well, to that, I can actually turn that logic back on you and say, <laughs> then by that logic, um, It's a Wonderful Life is not a Christmas movie because it just happens to take place on Christmas. Yep. Fun fact, um... I did a uh, stream back during December. Is Lethal Weapon a Christmas movie? Yes, it takes place on Christmas. It has uh, Christmas an music, opening. Christmas trees. Yep, Christmas <laughs> trees, all of that stuff, including movie Chris or Christmas movie being played and yep. all of that. The only thing that went against it being a Chris, two things that didn't go with it being a Christmas movie: Santa Claus was not present, and. Uh, the fact that it was released in May of that year. So yeah, that's release the dates only thing I had going against it. Yeah. But release, otherwise, it is. Release notwithstanding, if it takes place around, around or on Christmas, it's a Christmas movie. Yep. Oh, so. Mike Hill's uh, super chat. That is, um, <laughs> I did a short about that whole thing. Godzilla Kong. It's like, it's supposed to be like Riggs and Murtaugh. And I'm like. I did not see it at all. <laughs> oh. That's like uh, Wingard. Which one is Riggs? Which one is Murtaugh? And before you answer, know that that's a catch twenty two question. You lose yeah. either way. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Gravy, happy birthday, Mario! Hello, Orange Chat and Chat. Good to see you, Gravy D. Black Samurai, what is up? Thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, did not get any, Black Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> Trey. Happy birthday. I'm too old for this shit. Yes, that is... Sorry, you're my dog. It's a... Uh, uh, Trey, then, it's racist because uh, you made Murtaugh a gorilla. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, and like, like kind of a little bit of trivia. Like people like would would kind of get the line wrong where you're like, you know, like, I'm getting too old for this shit. Eventually, Murtaugh does start saying, I'm getting too old for this shit, beginning with, I believe, the second one. But in this one, Not he this just one. says, I'm too old for this shit. Yep. Yep. So. Hey, Steve, good to see you. Yeah, Trey's, like, Trey's, Trey's going, getting on my good side, pretty much. I uh, yes, have $5 super chat from my kill. I'm too old for this shit. Yes. Yep. $10 super chat from Mr. Tex. Thank you so much. It's happy B-Day. Thank you so much. Gray BD, member for 17 months. It's your party and you can rage if you want to. Well, I'll leave the craziness to Riggs in this case. Probably a super chat from Azur, Azur Worm. Thank you so much. Happy birthday, Mara. Good good to see you all. Hope you all are doing well. Abomination. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> yes, I would consider it a Christmas. It is definitely a Christmas movie. If it takes place on or around Christmas, it is a Christmas movie. Well, so, that's better reasoning. That's better reasoning, Epi. That's better reasoning. Dinner bells. Hello. Thank you for the birthday cake emojis. Uh, there's Orange Chat in the chat. Thank you so much. Soul Assassin. Hello. Good to see you. Gigawatts. One of my partners in bringing democracy to the bots in Helldivers mm -hmm. 2. So good to see you. It's a happy birthday from Down Under. Down Under. Thank you so much, The Oz. I hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to look at, like, look into trivia for that. Um, let's see. Lethal Open 5 was in Always in Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. There is gonna be a Lethal Weapon 5. Uh, Mel Gibson said, but through, by hell or high water, this movie will be made. So it was Lethal Weapon, the original buddy cop film. Well, Abomination says, like, you know, Blazing Saddles is original Black Buddy Cop film. We're going to go back that far. But I say, yeah, it's maybe not the original, but definitely up there with, the, like, the earliest that inspired didn't... movies like Bad Boys and Rush Hour. What about Beverly Hills Cop? Didn't he have a partner in that one, too? Or was it just him? You know what? I can't remember. 
All I remember from Beverly Hills Cop is Axel F. So yeah, <laughs> Axel Foley. So I'm like, um, that's the song. The song. Yeah, actually, I, yeah, so. Like... And that gnarly music video of the dude actually playing the uh, synth or the like three different synthesizers dressed up as a di or as a street detective. Uh, okay, yeah, Beverly Hills Cop is basically yeah. a buddy, buddy cop yeah. movie. Um, making sure I don't miss anyone. If I do miss anyone, I do apologize because I, um, because it jumps on me a little bit. And yes, I, I don't see it. I don't know where when when guard is coming from with that description. Yeah, because uh, basically not the best just, description. <laughs> no, I don't see it at all. It's like, dude, no, this. This isn't this isn't Riggs Murtaugh comparative. And like the Oz is isn't a Christmas movie, it's the Christmas movie. Yes. So eh. I like both for different reasons. Yeah. Um so oh my god. We're gonna get into that because there's a little bit of trivia for that scene. <laughs> the, begins, like, the death, <laughs> which is basically the catalyst that basically spurs this plot forward. Yep. Um Funny thing, when I first saw this movie, for the birthday wish, or actually, when I later saw this movie, uh, because I saw that I didn't see this movie in its entirety, I saw a little bit of it when I was a kid, mm -hmm. but when I saw the movie when I was a little older, it's like, is that Britney Spears? But then it's like, no, Dan, this is the 80s, she wasn't that old. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, you're not trying to draw a psycho pension. You really are crazy. I like that line pretty much where it's like people yeah. think I'm suicidal and they don't want to work with me, so I'm fucked. People think, or they think I'm faking it for a psycho pension, in which case they don't want to work with me and I'm fucked. Either way, I, mm -hmm. I'm fucked. <laughs> pretty much. So either way, I'm fucked. fucked. Yeah. So there was like so many good lines I would have wanted to use for the thumbnail, but they were too long, pretty much. Uh, like, for example, where it's like, I'm a real fucking cop, this is a real fucking badge, and this is a real fucking gun. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Dominic the writer. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Uh, Jenner Bell's trailer for Bad Boys 4 really slaps. I I think it played before Godzilla X Kong when I went to go see that movie, but I can't remember. I want to if see I Godzilla see that movie, X it's going to be uh, a, sp a special copy. Yeah. Might maybe not in theaters right away. I want to see it, and uh, I, the only trailer that I remember seeing for that, or when I went for that movie was uh fall guy and i actually want to see that movie because david leach has a hand in it yeah i think you mean one a shot at the title hey, but, say uh... jack want a <laughs> shit at the title <laughs> i mean it was pretty dirty in that yard man just saying yeah. kind of slippery we'll be we going through we'll be we going through it uh but yeah i like this so i'm basically gonna open up um i'm gonna like key it up to where we, we see the suicide. We're not going to watch it, basically. But I want to see if I can like key it up to where we like see where she's jumping off. Because there is some there is like trivia that I find fascinating with this. Because that is actually the actress doing the jump. Careful it's with not, the... So it's uh, not a stunt woman or anything. She's yeah. actually taking that dive. Careful with the angles. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to try and get a shot of like the where you see the ground as she's going down. Yes, and I understand the angles... <laughs> yeah, that's a heavy nude scene. <laughs> because the grounds. On okay, I'm gonna, I'm, pres I'm gonna share a screen here, so no, so no nudity chat. This is actually, uh, she's doing the jump. Mm -hmm. She's doing the jump herself. She was actually trained by a stuntman, so she's do taking that dive herself. And there, the parking lot is basically a giant airbag painted to look like cars parked on a street. And it oh, blends no seamlessly shit. in that shot. So she's not only taking that dive, she's like that jump onto this. I mean, like, I'm not saying she's falling from that height, but she's doing the jump and landing on it. That's actually a giant airbag. That's so one of the illusion. best damn airbags I have ever seen, man. Yeah. That's actually an illusion. So they're able to achieve that shit in 1987, but they can't figure out with green screens nowadays. 
where it's like you can pretty much p pick out the fake. You can get a saxophone, yeah. So I have like so basically no nudity chat. I just wanted to show a shot of those cars because that's that those cars aren't actually there. It's just a perfect, um, basically a, a painting. Which, oh, I'm not highlighting that comment, Steve. I see you. <laughs> I see that. I see that comment. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to stop sharing the screen because I don't want to risk like playing it and like, you know, getting my channel yeeted because boobs appear. If they're quickly dispelled, then yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So the, the first of the two that we see, let me like reshare it, is uh, Danny Glover's character, Roger Murtaugh. And in the movie, the character is supposed to be 50 years old. Like, like literally the movie starts, or not the starts, but like the next very next day, it's his birthday, pretty much. So like when we see his character, it's his 50th birthday. Danny Glover was only 40 when he made this movie. So basically, he's playing a character 10 years older than he is. Yeah. Mel Gibson, who plays Martin Riggs, is playing a character that's um, 38. So close 35. to 35. According to trivia, he's like 38, pretty much. But Mel Gibson himself is only 30. I just looked it up. It says here 35. At, as about 35, so well, could be yeah, 38. So, yeah, so he's For also forever. playing a character older than he is. And Murtaugh's character, this is like, you know what, again, it doesn't, like, you know, the casting doesn't matter, like, basically, if it, like, you can write characters that transcend skin color. Like, you don't have to specifically write for a certain character all the fucking time based on superficial qualities, because Murtaugh, the character of Murtaugh, his character was written without any skin color in mind. Nope. Without any skin color in mind. I'm not sure about Riggs, though, necessarily, but Murtaugh could have been played by anyone in mm -hmm. this movie. Danny Glover was, um, like, specifically chosen for this role. They don't mention these... No, they don't mention these blacks at all. It's like, there's no defining skin co like, color qualities with this character. And it's a busy, like, at least in terms of that, pretty much. This was after, yeah, and that's part of the reason why he was picked because uh, they were impressed with his performance in the color purple that he was cast in this role. So, so and it's a basically not, I'm not saying this is right, any actor could have played this role, but it was had no defining qualities. So, Dan Glover was able to step in, and it's believable. Yeah. So, unfortunately, have, yes, Stig. Yeah. So, but in this case, in this one here, at least, it's not a factor. Like it, it's, it's not, not overtly pushing it. I will say yeah. that because if you do look at his uh, his refrigerator, you got the whole big old, or you got a big thing saying "free cell on it. Yeah. But that was also a huge thing back then too. So it really yeah. isn't a racial thing. No. And he's like basically the family man of the two. Yep. He has a wife and three children, basically two daughters, one son, and it goes goes girl boy girl. Because the youngest is a girl. His oldest is actually only about 14 years younger than he is. <laughs> he's supposed to be playing a teenage character. She's only 14 years than he is. So he's basically about 40 years old when he's filming this movie. His teenage daughter is played by someone who's about 25, 26 years old. Damn. She looked like she was a teenager almost. She looked like she was younger. Yeah. yeah. That explains and why I, she looked I, a I, lot older. Like, this is, like, moving, this is like jumping ahead, but I loved when Martin Riggs is visiting his house for the first time, and the teenage daughter is just like, ogling, <laughs> just like ogling yeah. him across the, table, across the table, and it's like so awkward. <laughs> And the, her siblings freaking call her out on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, put your shit off. And he's laughing about it. 
Is it also no coincidence that both of these uh, characters were introduced naked? So I, you know what? Maybe not a coincidence. Uh, I mean, the original, first... intro, the original uh, I'm going to find the trivia for their original depictions of the characters. Yeah. There's an original introduction for Riggs. Um, but go ahead. What did you want to say? Uh, I mean, the victim, the one that gets the whole movie started, naked. Mm -hmm. uh, Murtaugh here, naked in the bath. Freaking Mel Gibson's Riggs, naked in his uh, trailer. So it's like, what's next? <laughs> yep. Um, in Shane Black's first draft of the script from 1985, Riggs and Murtaugh were much darker characters with very grim backstories. They both had flashbacks of their time in Vietnam with Murtaugh at one point remembering how he accidentally killed a young soldier with his bare hands during intense military training, even before he went to war. And Riggs remembering how great a killing machine he was and how many people he killed while working as an assassin for the CIA, which is why U.S. and V.C. soldiers considered him a legend. The script also had more of a backstory for Joshua, who, just like Riggs, was also working for as a CIA assassin in Vietnam and also got a legendary status due to all the things he did in the war, which explains how they knew each of each other's names and reputations in the film. Um... And let's, uh, I'm going to jump forward because, like I said, there's an original introduction for Riggs's character. I'm trying to find that little bit of trivia. You know, it does make sense with the writing when you hear a couple of lines in this movie where he, uh, or where Riggs explains that he took, or he took out a guy from like a thousand kilometers or something like that, or a thousand feet or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. also he, says to Joshua, it's like, you want a shot at the title? Well, there you go. Now you, or that actually has a little bit more weight because of the original script. I stop because, yeah. Whereas, like, you know, it's, it's uh, we don't seem like really nudity when it comes to Danny Glover's character. We definitely see full nudity when it comes to Mel Gibson's character. Yeah. And Gary yeah. Busey in this movie, folks, you gotta give him credit. This man trained like mad in between takes mm -hmm. for the uh, martial arts scene, scene coming up near the end, the fight scene. So. But yeah. Riggs in this, yeah. I love the introduction. He's down mm -hmm. on his luck. He just, he, he's, you very much understand this is a guy that doesn't really give a fuck about life. No, like you, like you, like you know the expression um, "suicide by cop," right? Basically, mm -hmm. if I were to diagnose him, at least his mental state in this movie, it's equivalent to that. Where it's like it's not necessarily suicide by cop, but he's he's gotten to a point where it's like if he, when he goes into a situation, if he dies, oh well. Like he like he puts he purposely puts himself into situations where he could potentially Empathy. die, yeah. So and he's willing basically he's willing to do it. I but he's, unwill he's unwilling to outright commit suicide. He can't. Yeah. He's tried. I, diagno yeah. mm -hmm. I diagnose it as professional apathy or personal apathy rather. I want to diagnose it as personal apathy because you see he does care. Yeah. He does care. It's like I think it's like more or less like uh. Bouts he doesn't care what personal. happens. He doesn't care what happens to himself. Yeah, bouts of personal apathy. Yeah, because yeah. he eventually, or because right when he gets up to that moment, he then pulls away. Yeah, realizing he does want to live. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, folks. Fun fact. Um, there was a uh, or I saw this on one of the streaming services this movie has a trigger warning now <sighs> just like youtube has a trigger warning for the joker 2 trailer uh depictions of attempted suicide and such and it's like are you fucking kidding me oh my god you got, I mean, this is just so pathetic how far we've come as a society. It is indeed clown world, Trey. 
Yeah. But yeah, it's like nowadays they're putting up freaking uh just to let you know if you're depressed, don't watch this movie. You might actually never mind, I'm not gonna say that. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, come on, folks, stop with yeah. this nonsense. You're not helping anything. No. You're only making your or people's spines softer. Yep. And uh, for those in the chat who oh. don't know this, in the original, in, there's an alternate opening and an alternate ending to this movie. Oops. The alternate opening, at least, at least like with Martin Riggs' character, is we find him drinking alone in a bar where he's accosted by a couple of thugs who want his money. Riggs claims all of his, all of his is in the bank and tells the thugs, quote, not to fuck with them. The yep. thugs attack him, but Riggs easily subdues them. He is then allowed to take a free bottle of booze from the bar in exchange for never returning. Uh, Richard Donner felt the movie should open with a brighter look at Riggs and neuter, apparently, <laughs> and film the scene with Riggs awakening in his trailer to replace to replace it. Uh, the alternate ending featured Riggs and Murtaugh saying goodbye to one another. Murtaugh tells Riggs he's thinking of retiring, but Riggs tells him not to, so... I'm glad they went with yeah. this, the ending that they did. Yeah. Because. Oh. So, and um, you want to talk scenes, replacing certain scenes. Uh, I'm going like, to scroll. I'm going to. Can I. Uh, there is a place where you can actually watch the original scene, I do believe. Mm -hmm. I just want to like just fast forward up like to this part real, oh, fast, yeah. real fast. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Right, and we'll, we'll jump back to like the suicide because like Murtaugh is the one who's called in to the suicide and uh, we'll get back to like, how he kn like knows the last name mm -hmm. of the suicide victim or at least what's thought is a suicide. Yeah. Um, This scene here actually replaces an original scene in like in like one of the earlier drafts of Shane Black's script because apparently in one of the earlier drafts of the script uh well, that's what I'm saying. A sniper, a psycho sniper. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's a school shooter, basically. Sniping at kids. And at one point, apparently, and like basically, the, like, you know, like during that segment, you would have seen a kid being uh, a dead kid would have been wheeled away in a gurney bag. Donner mm -hmm. is the one who said, OK, we have to cut that. That's too dark. And he brought in and uh, brought in a writer who really goes uncredited. Uh, for the Lethal we Weapon franchises, he's pretty much like brought in to tone down the dark, uh, basically the dark moments in Shane Black's scripts, but still retaining um, the overall feel of the like the movie itself. And he he brought in, he changed it, and this is the scene that replaced that scene. This scene right here is what was is what replaced it. This sting little sting operation that Riggs is part of, where like these guys are selling, so uh, selling cocaine out of a Christmas tree lot. All right, you want to like you want to like argue that's not a Christmas movie? This is literally a drug operation in a Christmas tree lot. <laughs> and at that. Says one of my favorite like Riggs lines in the in the movie, which I couldn't use on the thumbnail partly because it was too long. When they think his badge is fake, yeah, and they accuse him of being crazy, and he does the Three Stooges move, like, yeah, and like you know they poke the eyes, <laughs> just slaps. All right. He pulls out his gun. It's like a, I'm a real fucking cop. That's a real fucking badge, and this is a real fucking gun. He's pointing the gun. Yeah. At and Mel Gibson is in real life a Three Stooges fan. He produced the biopic from 2000. Oh, nice. So he is basically unironically like a Three Stooges fan. So he does that just naturally. Just naturally. But I'm going to like jump back a little bit. Because this. All right. Oh, all dressed up and no one to blow. I like that line too. I liked. <laughs> <laughs> all dressed up and no one to blow or, with yep. that Dixie chick so uh, who claims to have seen it all went go down the night before this one that's just this one right here yeah the fuck you oh you're hilarious <laughs> 
he, no, he doesn't offer them twenty dollars for the coke. Um, he asks them like he basically he asks he says he's gonna take all of it, but like to throw in a six footer as well, which is like a six foot tall Christmas tree. So that, so basically they allow they say that. They so he does They say they say one hundred, but he but like you know like obviously like Riggs is being an ass with them pretty much. Yeah. So like he's placed starts counting out like a hundred dollars to piss them off pretty much. So they're the ones who said like a hundred, but he's like, you know, acting like an ass and then counting out like, you know, 20, 40, 50. And then he's counting like the, the, the like, the Hey, shut up, man. I'm trying to cop or listen. And there's like a hundred thousand. <laughs> That's how the scene goes pretty much. Hey Ruben, thank you so much. And he says, also glad you got your OG Twitter account back. Orange hats. Thank you so much. Ruben. Brimstone, good to see you. Yeah. It, it was real money. It was actual money, but mm -hmm. he, he, he was like, Pissing them off by counting out a hundred dollars when they wanted a hundred thousand for the <laughs> entire stock of coke, yeah. and that's when basically the uh, little shootout happens because you have a guy behind Riggs with a shotgun. He blasts away one like one of the drug drug dealers. Riggs shoots and wounds because he doesn't kill the guy. Shoots and wounds the uh, the guy he slaps when he's doing the Three Stooges impression. And I like how he's like rolling around on him, grabbing his gun. And he, Where's your buddy? Where's your buddy? Where's your buddy? And he's like, he's looking around <laughs> for the third guy yeah. who you basically like, you know, base, you know, tries to hold Riggs hostage. And that's another scene that I love, like Mel Gibson sells, where it's like, you know, it's like, is he actually crazy? Because he's, he's telling the cops who were like, you know, basically just like flock onto the scene in that moment where it's like, like he's like shoot like sh shoot him shoot him and the cops don't want to do it because the bad guy is so close to yeah, friendly fire. fire yeah so they don't want to risk friendly fire and he's like yelling at them shoot him and he even says at one point to shoot me yeah he's talking to the guy he's like shoot me shoot me shoot me shoot me like, he's pulls like, the gun shoot him, shoot me. <laughs> yeah. so it's like i like i love how mel gibson sells that because again it's like is is he is that you know, just in the moment craziness because like the situation that he was in or is he actually crazy? Yeah. Yeah. And it shows his head. Cause they actually have to calm and or he actually has to calm down because he, he's like, he's like, <laughs> yeah. uh, and he actually has to calm himself down. So it's like, uh, yeah. I think he was on the edge again. Yeah. So a little bit on the edge, a little bit on the edge. And um, in this scene, in this basically this scene, we find out like I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit because as Murtaugh is leaving his house, his wife mentions that uh, this apparently this man by the name of uh, Michael Hunsaker was trying to reach him. That a man that Murtaugh knows from serving in Vietnam, so basically a Vietnam war buddy. So he knows, so he knows that name, and we find out. Fast forward to the suicide that pretty much opened up the movie that she has the last name of Hunsaker. Mm -hmm. So she is his Vietnam War buddy's daughter. And so it's basically, it becomes essentially a priority for Murtaugh, where it's like not necessarily just a routine suicide case. So now there's something per a little bit personal, which I appreciate, which I, I appreciate about this. Without it becoming like a full scale vendetta operation from him. Actually, a very deep film about trauma, his wife's death, and the horrors of the deep state drug rings. Yes. So. Yep, Tom Atkins is good in this. Basically, Tom Atkins plays the deceased girl. Like she, I, I call her a girl, but like, like she's a young woman, deceased woman, young woman's father, the Vietnam yeah. War buddy, Hansecker. And again, this becomes personal for Murtaugh just because of his relationship with Hansecker, without it being like a like a revenge s type film, which I appreciated. It just gives a personal. It just gives like a personal touch to his motivations. And oh, this 
this is the, this is the therapist and oh. this is the captain and she's in only like one other scene in this movie but she's the one who's pretty much trying to tell them not to let Riggs work like he like he he basically needs further evaluation based on his behavior and this is, this is pretty much why nowadays whenever cops are on any type of psychiatric leave they have to like literally be given a full bill like you know Bill, bill of good health. Full clearance. Yeah. By a professional, like a, like a therapist, psychiatrist, whatever you want to call it, pretty much. Like they need a clearance to get back onto the force. We're in, like, back then, it's like, well, thank you. Like, thank you. Thank you for your input, doctor. Um, and he's even, this captain even says, like, if he, if he commits suicide, well, then I guess I'm wrong. Like, he's, he brushes her off. Like, yeah. Her, uh, reserva- her reservations. Whereas, like, in the grand scheme, like in the grand scheme of things, in a way, they're right by allowing him on the force because he does show that he's not he, but he's not crazy, or like, any, like what the, the what the belief is. However, and you know, they, like, I, I think they brush her off a little too easily. Yeah. So, maybe the cop who shot and they corn had thing to the like he's still a good like we know like you know basically as the movie progresses but he's still a good cop that he's still a good cop it's just like this scene alone sets it up to where it's like so when when his action when he, those actions take place as the movie progresses where it's like you question is he actually crazy or does he just want um what's called psycho pension mm-hmm. it kind of leaves the viewer in doubt a little bit which i i like you could have an inseparable woman on screen and she wasn't the protagonist yes but she did have she did have a point. She did have a point. So, so she shouldn't be completely brushed off. I think originally they wanted to bring um, could have been two completely different films. Yeah, I think they originally were thinking of casting William Hurt in the role of Riggs, I believe, which I cannot see. Nope. It's hard to see anybody else as these characters. Yeah, I believe yeah, William Hurt was considered for the role of Riggs. Uh, and Mel Gibson himself turned down roles in The Fly and The Untouchables to or- in order to do this movie. Yeah. So, uh, but well, I, I'm trying to like the reason given for William Hurt's So, um, oh, by the way, Leonard Nimoy was one of the choices for directing this movie, but he didn't feel yep. comfortable doing action movies. Plus, he was directing Three Men and a Baby at the time. Yeah. So, uh, trying to like find the trivia on her because it said it gave a reason why they chose not to. Oh, and you'll find this funny, Orange Hats. They purposely built tension between Busey and uh, Gibson's character to add realism with their mm-hmm. character interactions in the movie by repeatedly telling each of, each of them that the other ate the last waffle. <laughs> of course they would. <laughs> so they would, so basically like Gibson would think that Busey ate the last waffle. Busey would think that like Gibson ate the last waffle. So, they, so that basically added a little bit of realism to the tension between the two characters. Folks, um, the reason why this is hilarious, uh, back in the 80s, I mean, waffles are great now. Everybody loves waffles. But back in the 80s, waffles were like the epitome of breakfast food. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you were having waffles, you were living life, man. Yeah. So... When they were, or if there was a waffle fight, oh my god, I can totally understand why it would piss you people off, yeah. <laughs> especially back then. Holy shit. Go oh, to, yeah. I mean, if you ever went to northern New York or lived in northern New York in the 80s and 90s, if you touched another person's waffle, that's enough to start a bar fight. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, seems it worked out. Yeah, Three Men and a Baby is a good movie. So yeah, so mm-hmm. it worked out. Uh, so William Hurt was originally considered for the role of Martin Race, but he was considered too obscure 
yes, for the Jake role. Watt. Another one considered originally for the role of Martin Riggs was Michael Bean. However, he had to turn it down because he was filming Aliens at the time. Yeah. So maybe I could see Michael Bean in the role of Martin Riggs, but definitely not William Hurt. Definitely. I can possibly see Bean as Riggs, yeah. Uh, as for me, fo- or as for me, guys, uh, in the chat, I wasn't a, that much of a waffle person. I mean, I I didn't mind waffles, but I was mostly a French toast guy, and I'm still today a French toast guy. Mm-hmm. I like all three: pancakes, waffles, French toast. Yeah. I pretty much like all three. Chocolate chips and my pancakes. You have me there for life. <laughs> this one, I wish I could play this scene. No. Oh. <laughs> I wish I could play this thing because I I still laugh at this part just because you know, like Riggs is coming in. He's like he's basically Riggs has been transferred mm-hmm. as Murtaugh's partner. Because they pretty much they I, I would I, I would argue the reasoning is because they want someone to babysit Riggs to watch him, pretty much. So they basically pawn him off onto uh Danny Glover's character Murtaugh. Yeah. And Murtaugh is like watching this guy. In the precinct, and like there's something off about him because, like, you basically his cop senses like you know, get triggered for one of a better way of putting it, get triggered. So he's like mm-hmm. watching this guy as this other officer is like informing him that, uh, even if the uh, the, the young woman at the beginning who commits suicide, even if she hadn't jumped from the building, the it was discovered that the pills or like you know, the drugs that she was taking had actually were, been laced yeah. with like drain cleaner. Yeah. So even if she hadn't jumped, she would have been dead within like 15 minutes. So they labeled it a homicide. Yeah. So someone's tampered with the, her drugs. So it basically officially moves from a suicide to a homicide. Mm-hmm. And and he's watching Riggs as this man is like, you know, going over everything. And Riggs, all Riggs does is pull out his gun, up, like basically upsets the, the check it, basically. Yeah. And Murtaugh's like, you know, gun, gun. <laughs> <laughs> I love and Murtaugh's watching him because he's like, this is a new face. Yeah. Why is my radar going off? Yeah. And I, but I love my, Mel Gibson's character, like his face when like when like yeah. he's like looking, he's like just like looking around like where like, where wait, what? Gun, gun, gun. <laughs> oh, he's like, he's, like oh. Whoa. Whoa. And, like, whips whips <laughs> and the guy who was like giving that briefing to Murtaugh is like he was like meet your new partner. Uh, yeah, there's this or they want you to break in a new partner and it's like oh jesus what good it's like yeah, oh, oh yeah uh murtaugh this is your new this partner, is your new partner. <laughs> <laughs> so and this is like it starts out dysfunctional which i appreciate it oh, starts yeah. out dysfunctional and it eventually gets to a point where they each each comes to an understanding of the other yeah and yeah, I'm too old for this shit. Yeah, he, yeah. Gets, flipped, he gets flipped in the in the precinct. Yeah. <laughs> he he just pulled it out to check it, pretty much. Like that's what every cop yeah. does. That's what every cop does. He pulled it out just to check it. And because he's a new face in the precinct, Murtaugh's like instincts as soon as he saw the gun was to tackle Riggs. Because that's all he did. Let me see if I can get a shot. Let's see, if I played. Shade the beard. Yeah, you look. He's like playing over band. Like, like, uh, yep. Perfect. One more. And he yeah, there we it. go. Just to check. Gun. Yeah, just, just to check. <laughs> like cops do that. Cops like yeah. cops do that. And I just want to play the keen team because I love the look on Mel Gibson's face. Yeah. <laughs> like, and the camera's like coming <laughs> in on him. He's like what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, this so guy's coming in. I love how it's shown from like the first person point of view of Murtaugh. So basically, the cameras are just coming at Briggs. Look at the background. This dude right on the desk. I love it. And that. the woman, there's the woman, the secretary's like, What the hell are you doing? What the hell? Are you doing? <laughs> this is just my awesome. I just love that. <laughs> Yeah, like, like basically they, they start out dysfunctional, but then they come to basically a real an understanding of each other. They're both fucked in their own ways. Yeah. They're both fucked I mean, in their own ways. And we even get the uh, name drop of the title in this uh or in the next scene. It's like, well, or because Riggs knows a lot of martial arts, and he's like, Well, I guess we're gonna have to register you as a lethal weapon. Yeah. Which it's like, oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I mean, even the poster pretty much, it's like, you know, yeah. uh Glover 
um, has a gun. Uh, Gibson is one. Yeah. <laughs> like, therefore, or something like that. You know, therefore, like, yeah. it's a weapon. So, yeah. But I love it, man. He Or the scene, it was just so crazy. He's like, what the hell is this dude coming at me for? <laughs> yeah. So, like, again, we have, like, basically the, uh, the uncredited genius of sorts of Jeffrey Bohm coming in and kind of, like, adding levity in this movie. So it's not not totally dark. There's yeah. some points where you can, <laughs> even if it's like a crazy situation like this, even if it's like, even if it's a point where it's like, I shouldn't laugh, but that's funny. He added that to the movie and I basically created one of the perfect buddy cop films. Yeah, definitely. And I think Gibson and Glover sell it. Like oh, each definitely. in their own rights, like sell these characters. So I mean, he's like, so he believes Glover's up there now. 50, even though he's like only 40 when he films this. I mean, Glover is getting in or getting up there on 80 and whatnot now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so his character is going to be plus 10 years. So it's like, um, you're really going to have us believe that. I mean, maybe they should have like he comes in to save the day at the last moment or something. I don't know for a fifth movie because. Having Mel Gibson do one final run as Riggs, he just couldn't retire with Raj, you know? Yes, know something how... like that. Yeah. I, I could see more, like, Danny Glover's character, not a mentor role, but kind of, like, equivalent to that. Yeah. Um, kind of like the, uh, the, the proverbial words of wisdom sort of role, like, mm -hmm. in, like in his golden years. But Riggs... Just couldn't retire. Yeah. Um, Rachel did like the job too much. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, they got, or maybe Riggs can uh, break in uh, Grandpa Raj's uh, grandkid as a cop or something. Who knows? Okay. We have to talk. Oh, yes. The introduction of Mr. Joshua. <laughs> Gary Busey sells psychopaths so fucking well. That's because Gary Busey is a psychopath very well. I know. I know. Deep, like deep down, like he pretty <laughs> much is. But he just sells it so fucking well. Like in this scene alone, you have the general. Which like, I'm sorry. I This act, this, 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 the actor who plays the general, I'm forgetting his name. But he, he's a very good actor. But I cannot mm -hmm. see, I cannot look at his face without seeing him from, from Liar Liar. For some reason. Right? I, can, I cannot <laughs> that I is picture. him, isn't it? Yeah, that oh, is him. Yeah. I, liar, liar. I can't, I can't <laughs> picture it. But he's a very good actor. I'm not trying to reduce him, but I, like, I can't yeah. That's when I see I his face. I love a good roast. Yeah. I just savage. What did we come up with? <laughs> but I, I very much, I love this scene because this, this dude that they're talking to is a drug dealer, pretty much. And, like, they're talking about the shipment. <laughs> And the payment sort of a situation because they're running this drug ring, like this, like this, basically this uh, extensive drug ring. And the general asks the man, "Like, do you have a lighter? Yeah, do you smoke? Do you smoke?" And like he's like yelling at, him, "Like, do you have a lighter? Like, yes, do you like, smoke? Yeah. Pull out your lighter." <laughs> and it basically yeah. traps his hand or traps yeah. his arm. And this yep. is this is essentially to show this man how loyal his men are to him. Because he has says this, Mr. Joshua, hold out your arm. And like oh over like, the flame. And the flame is like right here. Yeah. And you see, I love that look. It's like you see Gary Busey going. Just like curling his lip a little bit. Yeah. And it's like he feels it. But he's not, or he won't move until his, uh, until his superior tells him to. Yeah. Like again, like it's just, it's it's just such a psychopathic yet brilliant way of demonstrating the loyalty mm -hmm. these men have. Like you, like you guys are gone. You're out there, like Pluto, man. Yeah. Let me see if I can get a shot for some yep. of you guys. Okay. Keep going. Another so, one. Hold on. There you go. 
Yeah, see. Like he's feeling there. That's how close the flame is. Close, like oh. close enough. Even if it was like just a perfect, like just like a trick of the camera angle, still like, you know, he's feeling it. Yeah. Now, I don't think that Garrett Busey actually did it because obviously you can't see everything in this shot here. So I'm guessing mm -hmm. they actually put a fake arm over it. But then fake again, arm or at the very least, do you remember like there's like that fire retardant stuff? Yes. That people can put on like, you know, like when they're doing stunts, either a fake arm or something like that, like covering the arm. Like a thin layer, so that way, yeah. like you know, it, it retards the fire, but you, like you're still able to do it. Because I'm telling you now, folks, yeah. you'd see the skin start to sizzle. Yeah. So no stunt or stunt or no stunt man would actually take a direct flame like that, and less or not like that. I mean, I've seen stunt men lit on fire. I mean, they did the perfect thing for uh, Watchmen where they actually put a dude in fire retardant gel and then put an accelerant on him over the gel. So, yeah. Yeah. But they God. wouldn't do it. It's, that was like 2000s. This was back in the 80s. Yeah. It smells like so. I mean, freaking Gary Busey. This was before Gary Busey also had his accident because I do believe he had an accident in the late 80s where... Uh, Hmm. he wiped out on his motorcycle and basically ripped half his face off, essentially. Yeah, because like his yeah. face like, doesn't look like it's... Yeah, this was before Yeah, uh, life made him prettier. <laughs> yeah. As he put it one time. Oh, that was before Have life made him Have you seen the uh, TV miniseries Rough Riders? Because Gary Busey's in that, and like he's like he's really good. Um, I can't remember which which uh, real life uh, military officer he plays. Um, Custard. Well, I've never seen yeah, a reference. But, uh, but he's really good in it. Oh he's my really god, good. I love this scene. In the yeah. middle of a freaking public area. Just fucking kill him! It's like... Yeah. Um, but, uh, should uh, we call like, the police? Yeah. <laughs> So, but we find like basically we're gonna be jumping forward again, Jesse. If you're new to this, yeah. we're not exactly going scene by scene when we're talking about the characters because we find out that he's not simply. I love like Tom Atkins' performance in here because he is a grieving father, and he he does like it beautifully in this scene, especially when he's kind of like holding the picture of his daughter to him, yeah. and he's trying not to break down and cry in this mm -hmm. public setting. But he's like, but it his grief quickly shifts to anger and rage yeah and he's like enraged and he's telling Murtaugh to basically just to kill the bad guys which like you know, ironically ends up happening anyway <laughs> but yeah. like to Murtaugh like he's not going to just straight up and go kill these bad guys because he's like he's a, a police officer he's rule of law he's going to arrest them if if possible like his first inclination is just going to arrest them yeah. but he has a friend telling him I don't care that you're a police officer fucking kill them in a public setting. However, you find out later on that, well, there's a reason why his daughter was targeted. Boy, you are popular tonight. Siblings group <laughs> chat. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> um, and there's a there's a reason why his daughter in particular was targeted, and it was to get to him because. For three days, he is trying to reach Murtaugh to pretty much blow the whistle on this organization, yeah. this drug operation that he was ostensibly part of. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Failed to fail to give his best, his good friend, that little bit of tidbit of information. Mm -hmm. So when he's when Hunsucker is killed later on. Murtaugh even says, like, you know, like, you got it easy, you son of a bitch. Yeah, because he was part of the whole operation. Yeah. Essentially. Shadow. Yeah, he's in, yeah. in on the drug business. He's in. So, so basically, his daughter was targeted to get to him after he tried. He basically tried being a whistleblower. Mm hmm. And I love we that scene because they. Pretty yeah. much like the like shooter, 
and it's just like just a helicopter just like nonchalantly just like flies up outside the window. Yeah. And it's I'm like, thinking oh, to myself, how does nobody hear it coming? Yeah. I mean, like, and or, or feel the waves from the blades because when they're close, like, you are pretty much blown off your feet mm -hmm. when the rotors are going. So, so we're not necessarily going to talk about all the characters, but like, he's, yeah. we find out he's like a major factor yeah. uh, in this, like, you know, the drug operation. Um, Oh, I we got, gotta do, got, yeah, gotta we gotta that. do the jump. Yeah. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> we don't know why this guy wants to jump. He just wants to jump pretty much. And basically the uh Riggs goes up because he's had experience. Because <laughs> the uh the official one is has yet to arrive on scene. Yeah. So basically Murtaugh allows Riggs to go up to talk this man down. <laughs> However, in true Riggs fashion, in true Riggs fashion, he handcuffs himself to the man. So he mm -hmm. says, if you jump, you, you're committing murder. Yeah. And that's the villain. He's like, I don't care. I don't want to jump. And then he grabs it. He's like, do you want to die? Yeah. Do you want to? <laughs> I love and it. Like, I actually then, turned then, that into a gif. That gif yeah. that I shared, folks, on Twitter, I created that one because yeah, nobody else did. And it's like, Psycho not cop, but I'm still a cop. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. I was just, do you really want to jump? Do you want to? That's fine with me. <laughs> Let's do it, asshole. Let's do it, asshole. And here's the thing. I love this. He doesn't hesitate. No. Oh, my God. He doesn't hesitate. And it's like, oh, damn. <laughs> Wait, so, there yeah, is he, a Santa Claus in this scene or in this movie. He, He's he at the scene. Him, yeah, he talked him down. Yeah, and I just love that. Like, it wasn't that normal way of talking him down. Like, I got him, him down. You want him down? I got him down. Yeah. <laughs> he pulls him into a different. Um, he pulls him into this uh, store that's like emptied out. And I love how he tries to slam the door, but it swings both ways. Oh my god! Well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what right here. Right, exactly okay. there. Go ten or go four ten. Yeah. It's like he's like you know going through the crowd. Oh, there's a Santa Claus in the back. There's a Santa yep. Claus. So yes, there was a Santa Claus. Holy crap! You get out of here. <laughs> get in here. Get in here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those like swinging doors. <laughs> He actually yeah. like just like slams it, so, so, like, <laughs> rings over. Yeah, and this is the part where like Murtaugh thinks like Riggs is actually crazy because yeah. Murtaugh like, basically he doesn't give Riggs his like you know necessarily give Riggs his gun, but it's, like you really want to kill yourself, like I basically put the muscle like the, put the barrel, I should say, under your chin, your yeah, yeah, under your or chin, in your, or under your in chin. Your mouth. Don't nibble on the barrel. Yeah. yeah. And it gets to a point where, like, basically, Riggs is is slowly pressing the trigger. Where you see yeah. it start to cock. Yeah. And as much I realizes, this guy would actually fucking do it. Yep. And he actually has to interject his hand in between the hammer and the or and the igniter or igniter yeah. because he's and he, I love it. He's like, "Ow, you're not trying to draw us, psycho pension. You really are crazy." Yeah. You really are but crazy. I love what Riggs does next. I mean, folks, my face here. It's like I'm hungry. Yeah. It's it's just he doesn't know what to say except I'm hungry. <laughs> like this. Yeah. If you're not trying to draw a psycho pension, you really are mm -hmm. crazy. And look how my or Mel Gibson is shaking right there, man. Yeah. He's doing that himself. Yeah. That is great acting. Like great, like great acting because, like again, it sells that. I think like the realization is also is dawning on him that he nearly shot himself in this empty store. So you have like basically the, that the shock of like that the, the uh, intensity Adrenaline. and the shock wearing off to the point yeah. where like he's shaking. It's the adrenaline. It's like, yeah, and it's like I'm hungry. Yeah. 
So, so <laughs> yeah. I love that. And, and I love it. I mean, he, so Murtoff calls the shrink and she's, she basically tries or tells him what she was trying to tell the captain. He's like, he might be on the edge, man. I mean, he lost his yeah. wife and whatnot. Uh, he's on yeah. the edge. And what we also don't see in this, uh, or in this, or we didn't cover it, but he actually did try to erase yeah. himself. Which he says that when he goes, don't be near him. Yeah. And so uh, I I love what happens next. He's in the car, and he's he's like, 50 damn you, 50 damn you. He's like, you're all right. Why are you talking to me? You're talking to a dead man. <laughs> he just goes nuts. He's like, I'm 50 yeah. years, I'm, I'm this close to her hair's leg from her retirement. And it's like, and he's like, what are you talking about me for? What are you talking to me for? You're talking to a dead man. I was fine before I met you. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And I like this scene because... Oh, yeah. Establishing trust. Est establishing trust and basically the Murtaugh, like basically, you know, like Murtaugh is, you know, like, see? And he shot him in the leg. You don't, <laughs> like, you don't have to kill him. Yeah. Now we can but, get information. <laughs> yeah. But... Riggs ends up killing him, well, not on purpose, yeah. not on purpose, but to but to protect Murtaugh. Mm -hmm. And I love when they come out of the pool because they try to say they they try to see if the guy's still alive and save him because he falls backwards into the pool and he ends up being like uh, enveloped in yep. the uh, pool covering. Yep. And he, and as soon as they like break the water, Riggs is like, "Oops." Like, well, now we can't get information pretty much. And I love, like, those women were in the house. And, like, they like, initially wave mm -hmm. at Murtaugh and Riggs. And, like, they was, like, Riggs and, and Murtaugh just, like, you know, show, like, you know, hey, we're cops. And it's, like, an oh, shit sort of a moment. Yep. Yeah. And Riggs saves Murtaugh. Yeah. And I, like I said, I like when they break the water. Because, like, the first thing, one of the first things Riggs says is, oops. Like, yeah, it was, uh, not, did not go as planned. So this establishes trust, and then Riggs is invited into the Murtaugh household. Yeah. Oh, my God, that whole scene was nuts. Yeah. Uh, I love that. It's like, or the end of it is so freaking great, because Raj is ragging on his, or is uh, making fun of his wife's cooking. Yeah. And Riggs just goes along with it, being polite and whatnot. But then at the end of it, he's like, "Do you, do you really like my mom's or my wife's cooking?" No. I, it's like <laughs> you put him so much. Or Mel Gibson's facial expressions in this, folks, is just so great because he's like, "Should he put me on the spot?" Or you, you just see him looking so fucking serious. No. <laughs> and it just it's like no <laughs> uh t 10 again yep or you can go like forward 20 again or actually more like 30 but i think that. they're eventually yeah. getting yeah they're coming like basically this is where they start to coming to an understanding yeah they really start to begin knowing each other he's like bullshit but thanks anyway yeah that's when he asks yeah. You don't trust me at all, do you? I, I love this conversation here. Yeah. Where we find out, like, you know, what Mel Gibson was good at during World War, uh, not World War, Vietnam War. Yeah. So he was a sniper. And I love that. You don't trust me at all, do you? And it's like, it's like, tell you what, you make it through tomorrow. And I'll begin trusting you without killing anybody, especially me or yourself. And I'll begin trusting you. Yeah. So I think ask about from that. And he talks, they survived a sniper shot. And I like how this kind of sets up the later scene. So it doesn't mm -hmm. completely come out of the blue where he's able to uh, take out the bad guys with a sniper rifle. They find out that like, he, it's what he did in the Vietnam war. And he was good at it. Like, like so good at it that he, pulled off a shot in high winds at like thousand yards that only like yeah. at most 10 people men would have been able to do. Yeah. Um, and then the whole, it's like, do you really enjoy my wife's cooking? Yeah. Oh, by the way, folks, uh, 
just go back, don't click it. Or in the previous scene, he gets the uh, X-rated videos of what's her name. And oh, yeah, the the, the daughter. Mm -hmm. I've actually talked with cops. There are cops that actually do have to watch that stuff as it is evidence, and it mm -hmm. and that is actually they explain that is one of the most uncomfortable parts of the job. Yeah, because they can't always do it at the office. They have to sometimes bring their work home, and when their freaking significant other or whatever catches them, it's like, "What are you watching?" Uh, evidence. Sadly. Yeah. It's and extremely awkward. This is one of my other favorite like scenes where Riggs shows up at his house. You know, I've been thinking you know, like you saw you like about the you know the Dixie chick. You know, yeah. What if she like what if she like there's more to it with like her? Like she just happened to see the entire thing play out and you know, like you know, and like the next scene is like they're going through how it like all that scenario just doesn't add up and then maybe Dixie knows more than what she's revealing sort of situation. And he's like He's talking to Murta as Murtaugh's like shaking the sleep from his eyes and to the point where he like he, he yells yeah. at Rick's like, you get out of here. Yeah, he's like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> oh, like I gotta show like because yeah. basically they have a little bit of a competition at the oh, range yes. as, as they're going through, as they're like, yeah. you know. I want to show She actually like, stops to say shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And oh yeah, I love how Riggs essentially wins. Mm -hmm. This is the slowest. Murtaugh does the quick draw. Yeah, Riggs does the clowning. Yeah, <laughs> with the face in the yeah. Have yeah. a nice day. <laughs> like that. Sorry. Yeah, Murtaugh did the nose, folks. Riggs yeah. did everything else. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shots. Yeah. Yeah. Love and mag. What a pipe. What do you got? Six shots. Yeah, officer, officer, I saw the whole thing, and they're like, you know, yeah. did you? Or like, you know, how, like, how did you see the whole thing? From where you claim you were standing, or perhaps maybe you were actually in the room? Yeah. Like, you know more than you're talking about. Yeah. And I, I love how they describe it, like, you know, it's thin. Like, I think... You know, your wife's cooking, so, like, you know, like, thin's my middle name. Like, you know, well, you're, with your wife's cooking, and that's understandable. What? Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, nothing. it's like nothing. <laughs> it's like what? What? <laughs> That's one of those what? What moments? <laughs> yeah, I love that. So you brave what, what Megatron, that. <laughs> super chat says hello birthday, hello, happy birthday, fellow Decepticon. So thank you so much, Megatron. There you go. Hope man. you're having a good day. Riggs is basically a dead shot. Yeah. So I, I love that. You know what? What? And they go basically go through. It's like you know what? We gotta track this Dixie chick down because she knows more than she's. Then she's yeah. letting on. Because something yeah. is not adding up. Something is not adding up. Uh, so I'm not going to really talk about... Basically, they get there and it explodes. And there's the, these boys outside. And I love, I, and I love when Murtaugh is trying to get the description from the kids. And you know, like they, I, I forgot about this part... Because at one point, before he gets this kid alone who saw the man who potentially like left the bomb, mm -hmm. uh, the, the gas meter guy, quote unquote gas meter guy, um, it's like, my mom says cops shoot black. black. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> and, he's saying, and he's saying this to a cop who's a black man. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. I forgot, yeah. I forgot about it's that. Like, oh shit! I mean, I was watching this and was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I mean, I watched like, Don't you guys life. realize he's black? He ain't black. He's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like happy I wasn't drinking anything because I would have like choked. Oh, like, yeah. like, <laughs> choked or spit? Which one? Choked or spit? <laughs> took me much. When the kids said that. And then they and, and eventually they, they they lure the other kids away. Like, you know, you want an ice cream? You want an ice cream? And they they like lure them away by like, no, not you, Alfred. Like you sit back here. We need your description pretty much. So they find out that it's a white the guy that this, this kid saw, uh yeah, put out on basically put out a call for Big Bird. Yeah. yeah it was, a, it was a white man with bl with blonde hair and he was painted. That's how this kid describes it, painted. And they're like painted. 
oh, tattoo. Yeah. Tattoo. And the tattoo is the same one that Riggs has. Let's see if I can yeah. get a shot of it. Are you sure? The kid's like, it looks like that right there. And I also love that other kid. How old are you, Alfred? Covers Alfred's mouth. He's six. <laughs> it's like, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I know. He's six. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell me. <laughs> it had a knife even. So I'm going to see if I can get a shot. Uh, right there. Yep. Right there. Never so that, quit. Yeah. So that tells Riggs, especially. Like the level of training that this per this man has, because like you know, like the mercury switch, mm -hmm. the type of explosives, and the fact that like, he has a tattoo, and like you know, he's describing you know, it's like this, like like these men, like you know, this is legit. Well, he said that he was under the kid was under the porch when the guy was checking the gas meter. So yeah, the kid was pretty close. Mm hmm. The kid was close enough that he would have been able to see the tattoo on the guy. Close enough that he would be able to recognize it. And that's a special forces tattoo. So like that is legit. Mm -hmm. So Oh, here's the scene where Tom Atkins' character gets it. Yep. So. Right here. Just casually. Boom. And it's like. He's holding eggnog. So like, the bullet goes <laughs> like him and through the eggnog. So again, Christmas, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Christmas. All right, so yeah, so I'm not going to show the entire scene, but like basically, Tom Atkins' character gets like riddled with bullets. It's not just one shot; like he's shot several times. Um, where this helicopter just like sh I don't know how people did not notice like here it's even just coming close to where they were because helicopters once they get close they're loud, and mm -hmm. then the blades cause like you know like you know, chairs and stuff to blow over. Yeah, and they target Riggs' character, and they think yeah. he's dead. The same Did you record. also notice no. the news organization KCOP Kill Cop, essentially? Yeah. yeah. It's like, could you be you anymore on the nose? Yeah. So. So, um, well, chances are, I would say no, because typically when shots are when shots are fired on movies, they're supposed to be blanks. So yeah, a projectile could come out, but it shouldn't damage. At least not a helicopter. So even if it hits, I don't think it would have done any damage. I, I doubt anything like really hits. Or like, you know, any, like, you know. Um, however, there were cartridges like that in the guns, like the scene where Riggs is contemplating suicide. Yeah. So even though the round itself was not real, if the gun had gone off, we know what happened to Brandon Lee. And he, and that, and that wasn't, and it wasn't Brandon Lee firing the gun. It was someone else firing the gun. So we know what would have happened. <laughs> Turn off the sound. Yeah. So, but they think basically, I love how like basically set up, they think so, so, Merch on Riggs from the realization that uh, Riggs was target, like basically was targeted and most likely thought to be dead, given like the whole like you know, sequence, which was mayhem. Mm -hmm. and because like Riggs was the one firing the helicopter, so Mr. Joshua would would have been, would have seen Riggs, so Riggs would have been the target. Murtaugh was inside, so Mr. Joshua would not have seen Murtaugh, at least not yeah. in that. Instance. So. Basically, they play. They basically, they basically play it off. Like, you know, let, let's let's allow them to think I'm dead. They think I'm dead. Let's allow them. I'm to a corpse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they even have the police do the uh, or go along with it. It's like, yeah, Martin Rig or Detective Martin Riggs was shot and killed this evening. Yeah. Yeah. 
This I like too. So like basically they have basically police go along with it and then a murder like basically was given to them to investigate. And I love when Myrtle was like, let me guess, because we didn't touch on this basically. The, his daughter wanted to go out one evening, and like the kids described it as like you know, blonde like a, a blonde white kid. Yep, yeah, big dimples. With, uh, with with big dimples. And so Myrtle was like, you know, let me guess. It's a blonde white kid with big dimples, right? And then like, how'd you know, Sarge? It's like, how'd you know that, Sarge? Then it's and, like, and like that is one of the most shit. awkward dispatch questions I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, this right here. About, about two blocks from your house. Probably blonde with big dimples. So like, How'd you know that, Sarge? How'd you know that, Sarge? And I love... I oh, love that. shit! <laughs> it's like, oh, because shit. <laughs> that Because the victim tells him that if anything Boyfriend. is was well, his daughter's in danger is in danger because that's the kid that the daughter wanted to go out with so chances are if his that kid was killed so he realizes his family might be in danger his daughter he realizes it's like his family might be in danger his daughter definitely would be in danger because that's the kid that she wanted to go out with so, well According to this trivia, um, I'm trying to find it because there is because I, I did read it where it does make sense that they would have known each other. Um, I met some of those shadows. It was the uh, the was basically that both both worked for, for the CIA. Yeah, uh, talking about Riggs and Mr. Josh Joshua's character. Um, so they would have like known each other's status, what they did and everything. So basically that explains how they would know each other's names and reputations. Um, that and the fact that Riggs is the one that Joshua sees outside because Riggs is waiting outside while Murtaugh is going in to talk to Hunsaker alone. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't see Murtaugh. At least not like you know, in that instance. He sees Riggs. Yeah. So Riggs would be the natural target. And then when it's like basically putting two and two together, who Riggs' partner is, yep. then they, they target Murtaugh's family. So we're going to skip forward because the daughter's kidnapped and they're arranging a meeting. And while Murtaugh is meeting with the bad guys, like the helicopter, even like and two cars come. And the daughter, to her credit, she's actually smart, or at least, you know, you know, you know, it doesn't, it's, she fails, but she's smart, at least in this instance. She jumps into that white limousine and drives away, attempts to escape. She doesn't just, like, you know, sc like, basically scream and... Oh, she was right. at first. She was, she didn't know what to like, do. Yeah. Until so, her like, father's you know, like, get in the fucking car! <laughs> yeah. Like, you basically, like, you have to get in, and, like, she... And she at least, and I mean, when I say smart, at least in that moment, she snapped to it and didn't allow panic to take over. Her yeah. dad's like, you know, yelling her to get like get in the car and drive off. She does, because in that instance, some people like panic to a point where like they can't do anything. I didn't get a ring snipe. Hey, Lucamus, good to see you. Thank you for the birthday wish. So Murtaugh's meeting with them while Riggs is off with the sniper rifle. And I love Murtaugh. When he says, take your hands out of your pockets. Yeah. He pulls out a grenade. Pin pulled. Yeah, pin, pin pulled. And jo Mr. Joshua doesn't believe, you know, believe he would do it. Well, Mur well Murtaugh is like, if she's going to die, she'll die with me. Yeah. Now, I don't believe Murtaugh would allow that to happen, but at the same time, it is entirely possible. However, he's buying time. Yeah. He's buying it's buying time while Riggs is in position to do what he did best during the Vietnam War. So I'm gonna see if I can get like some shots of it. Because he has a sniper rifle. Something move to your left, come on. 
So you only need to put the pin back in. Hardware, the left, you know, hold on. Let's see if I can get, become closer, then we all die. And when jo Mr. Joshua shoots him, that's when he kind of inadvertently has, like, moves him out of the way. So rigs some fire. I love how, like, this shot is, like, basically one after another, like, boom, boom, down, down, down. Come on, honey. Maybe you want just, like, just a smoke. So the grenade, boom, one, boom, two. Yep. Damn it, it's Riggs. Boom, that guy. Boom. Shoots him. I mean, that's pretty fucking traumatic for someone. Yeah. Well, she's like 16 and hysterical right now because people yeah. are dropping dead right around her. So, skipping forward because we got to get pretty much to. Oh, Al like, Long. The Briggs and Murtaugh are captured, and Al Long yep, yep. is basically electrocuting. The stereotypical Briggs. Chinese bad guy in all 80s films. So, and I forgot he had a, he had a, a speaking line. So, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. Yeah, it's like his voice is like. Didn't expect that voice. <laughs> yeah, didn't exactly expect, didn't expect that voice, and I forgot he had a line. Yeah. In this movie, it's like a brief line, and it's it's before um he's killed by Riggs. Yeah. But you know you have Murtaugh and the daughter basically. My Murtaugh is being beaten up. His daughter is like you know also imprisoned, and they're torturing Riggs. So, you can't be still. He got a lot of work. Yeah. Richard Donner is an absolute genius in filmmaking. Agreed. We have, like, basically Richard Donner to thank for the script getting cleaned up for this movie. Because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it was a lot darker in the original script than the final version we get. So. And I love how Riggs kills him. Oh, yeah. Wraps his feet. Or the feet. Uh tying right around his neck and chokes until he snaps or until the neck snaps. Sorry, Sorry pal. pal say, this is the line. Sorry, pal. Say goodnight. Yeah. I wish I forgot he had a line. And I'll headbutts him, kicks him in the face, and then uses his legs to pretty much choke him and break his neck. I think you hear a snap. Yeah, you do. Or El Long Falls. Yeah. Also was Genghis. Yeah, and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. He was Genghis Khan. We'll be talking at least the um, the second one. Because this is part of the ones yeah. and twos, Lucamus. So we'll be talking the second one. Maybe some point down the road, talk about the other uh, sequels in the Lethal Weapon franchise. But at least right now, just talking about Lethal Weapon 2 after this. So, so, well, for the martial arts in this film, um, they studied. Oh yes. Uh, where is Did it? Because there are three that they were that, at least like at least three that were they studied for yeah. this. Let me just try to find it. Um, if I could spell. All right, the actors were trained in three types of martial arts: capoeira. Which is a fighting style originating in West um, by West Africans used to fight off slave traders. It's like it's basically the dance fighting. Jailhouse Rock, a technique evolved in United States prisons, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a style founded by the Gracie family. Uh, the fight's choreography was first tested on stuntman Mick 
stuntmen Mick Rogers and Shane Dixon. The film's final action sequence involving the fist fight between Martin Riggs and Joshua was filmed over four complete nights shooting from dusk till dawn. So they studied three martial arts for this film. Bob Genghis Khan. So. So basically, Al Long meets his end here. But I gotta fast forward basically to where Riggs is chasing down Mr. Joshua. So Riggs saves Murtaugh and his daughter and does the whole joke. What does one shepherd say to the other one? Let's get the flock out of here. Saves them. And they're running through this bar club area. And there's still bad guys there. So basically they're shooting the bad guys. Uh, yeah, but including Matt McAllister's death as well. Shooting bad guys as they're running through this bar to catch up to McAllister and Mr. Joshua. All right, so basically... Let me see if I can... Police officers. So, they're trying to catch up to Mr. Joshua. And this calls for basically Riggs running him down on foot while he's in a car. Yeah, he's a sweet tooth. Steals candy and die hard and is tempted by Twinkie and Bill and Ted, yeah. So, we'll... We'll do, uh... McAllister's death is is uh, right here, but I love the scene where I love. I just want to touch on this scene right here, where Mr. Where Joshua has to steal another car because Riggs basically like blew out the engine in the car, original car he'd stolen, and I love what he says to the guy. Let me see if I can cut. So, well, Riggs is hit by a taxi. Come on. Where does he say? Mine if I test drive your Audi. <laughs> that yeah. That. <laughs> like when he's when he's commandeering, when he's stealing another car, he just like just opens the door. He's like, mind if I test drive your Audi? <laughs> yep. Comes GTA for a second. Yeah. And like Mr. Joshua ostensibly gets away. But like this, the, the whole chase is just crazy, like I said, because Riggs is chasing him down on foot. And catching up to him by like cutting through, um, cutting through like you know an area to get to the like the road because he's heading towards the uh, like they said the expri- uh, freeway. Um, and there's a uh, where is it? Okay. The, okay, this is one I want to touch on because the, the main part of Shane Black's final script that made Warner Brothers fall in love with the project was apparently a descriptive line during the sequence where Riggs tries to track down Joshua after killing the torturers and rescuing Murtaugh and his daughter involving a car crash caused by Joshua. The line was, and the cars trade paints. So according to the trivia, that line is pretty much what made Warner Brothers greenlight this movie. It's not the final version we get, but that line in the, the script is what made them greenlight it. And, so the, and the cars trade paint. So. Right. We gotta talk McAllister's death. Because McAllister, he tries getting away. Murtaugh shoots the driver. And McAllister is trying to control the vehicle, but ultimately ends up getting hit by a bus because he he's in the passenger side and can't control it too well. And gets pinned. And I love how like, somehow he gets pinned underneath the seat because that looks like a headrest. When he flips over, that looks like a headrest. Like he's pinned by something in this car. And there's grenades. The car's on fire and there's grenades. And Mars doesn't even bother getting close. Trying 
Try to reach for the grenades. No more McAllister. So that's what happens when you get greedy. Yeah. Yeah, something's keeping him pinned, pretty much. But for the most part, he's pinned, and McAllister is no more. So, hey, J4, thank you for the super chat. He says, happy birthday. Mel Gibson rules. Yes. I love Mel Gibson as Riggs, and I love Danny Glover as Murtoff. And we got to get to the final scene because um, Murtaugh realized, like, you know, Riggs reveals to Murtaugh that um, Joshua got away. Because, like, you know, because, you know, you know Riggs was hit, basically hit by the taxi uh, and so forth. He, like, he, he, Joshua got away. Because he's telling he's telling Murtaugh to go to the hospital. Let's get you to the hospital. You're hurt. Let's... But Murtaugh's like you know, he's like basically just like refuses after he finds yeah. out that Joshua has gotten away because Joshua knows where his his he lives. Yep. He can go to his like his house. So basically, he tells these two cops, "We're taking your car." Yeah. And I then the the evolution of trust in this movie because throughout the movie, Murtaugh would not allow Riggs to drive. Yep. In this instance, he allows Riggs to drive. Well, he knows Riggs is probably going to get there a lot quicker. Get there a lot quicker and so forth. But at least there's a level of trust there. Yeah. He allows Riggs to drive to his house. And there's no big shootout. It's basically just <laughs> he's barbecuing his nuts on Hollywood Boulevard. He's talking about McAllister. It's like McAllister's dead. Yeah. And instead of it being like a, a grand shootout, it's I love it. It's basically it's a mono e mono fight between Joshua and Riggs. Not the best cinematography. I mean, when they're up close and fighting, you it's like where, what am I seeing here in a couple of the shots? Maybe not the best fight, but I I like how it's not yeah. clean. I like how yeah. it's not clean because it's pretty much two men like just. It's a street fight. Beating on each other. It's like a full-on street fight. And even Murtaugh is like telling the cops to stay back. And you're like, you know, it's like. I think at one point Murtaugh wants him to tag him in. Like, you know, let me. Let me me take him. Let me take him. Let me take him. And they're like, no. No. (laughs) It's very realistic. It's not, it's like, it's not choreographed. It's very realistic. It's two men just beating the fucking hell out of each other. Although it was choreographed. I mean, I'm saying, but it looks. But I'm saying, like, yeah. you know, in, in how it looks, it if, was it's, well if it's well choreographed, yeah. If, if, it, if it's too well choreographed to be like, okay, like that's okay, that's a little too, a little too fake. You can call it and things like that. But choreographed enough that you can believe it's two men just like who hate each other, just beating the ever living shit out of each other. Mm-hmm. And at one point, like Murtaugh would have even have allowed this to happen if it got to it, but Riggs is the one who stopped himself because Riggs actually gets Joshua in a chokehold with his legs, like an arm lock and a chokehold, and he's ready to kill Joshua that way. And it's Riggs himself who pulls himself back and says, "It's not worth it. He's not worth it," which I appreciate. And I wish I could play this fight scene because like, you want a shot at the title. So it's in the rain, so basically it's dirty. And like you know, he's like telling them until the sergeant, till then Sergeant Murtaugh is on it's charge is on charge on site. So he's telling the cops, "Still stay back, let him do it." Yep. So like just uh, full on just beating the ever loving cow out of each other. Like you could tell there when like the guy when one's kicked up and thrown on the ground, you could definitely tell there that his fall was cushioned mm-hmm. based on how he was dropped. But still, yeah. like I said, I appreciate it. It's basically, basically bare knuckle. This is Sergeant Riggs' arrest. You like you know, just don't fall, yeah. like basically don't interfere. His collar. Yeah. So like and and I appreciate. You see, like, Riggs visiting his wife. Riggs does not kill Joshua. He's like, it's not worth it. 
And then when uh, he gets up, pulls the gun, and yeah. Yeah, so he gets, like, you know, basically. And that's when I love, like, basically Riggs and Murtaugh fire at the same time. So basically, yeah. this shot right here, I'm going to play, play it real fast. Boom. From a six-shooter and the nine-millimeter Beretta. Boom. Because Joshua pulls an officer's gun. As he's being arrested. Yeah, it's a realistic fight. You know, it's not a Jackie Chan fight. It's very realistic. Um, oh yeah, like you know, trivia. Uh, Luke is like this movie would have been a lot darker originally. Um, um, where is it? I love this ending. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you a little secrets. On um, after all we've been through, if you think I'm going to eat the world's lousiest Christmas turkey by myself, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah, you're crazy. I got a little secret for you. I'm not crazy. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. good. Let's see. Let's, let's <laughs> eat. And like, we might if I invite a friend, and he like whistles, and we like didn't mention this earlier. Riggs has a dog. And Murtaugh has, yeah, has a cat. So basically, I, I love Burbank this. Uh, I don't like think Burbank this. will like this. My, my, yeah. I gotta play this scene. I don't think Burbank the cat will. Yeah. Is going to like this. Well, five on the mutt. I'll put five on the mutt. Yeah. And then you. I hear, love that. The second the dog gets in, you hear the glass shattering. Gla glass shattering. The sound of a cat going. <laughs> like Burbank, no, like, Burbank. like kids are shouting, like Burbank, the dogs barking, and all Murta does is like just like just stands out there and notices, oh, there's a light bulb out, and it just reaches up, and just casually, just like screws the light bulb back in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just love this glass eyes, Burbank barking, yeah, Burbank <laughs> just like fixes the light bulb. Watch out, Burbank, and he's like, I'm too old for this shit, for this. And just like closes the door, and that's basically the end of Lethal Weapon, which I appreciate this ending more. It ends on a Christmas dinner. It's a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there it is, chat. No, I mean, I can't remember. But what did they say? What happened to the dog? The dog. Yeah, the dog. Uh... The dog lived, and or the dog is alive all the way up to four. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty much like a near perfect movie. It's like a near perfect movie. You know, like you know, to have Shane Black to thank for the original script. Uh, Jeffrey Baum bring brought in by Richard Donner to clean up that script. Like one of the best <laughs> buddy cop movies. Oh, and that like, window there, which we didn't uh, touch on, chats like you see, like that like, caution tape there, and like the. Oh yeah. That's where that's where Riggs and Murtaugh, uh, Jimmy the by 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 uh, jamming the accelerator on a cop car, like just sort of ran a cop car into that into his house, Murtaugh's house. Yeah. When when uh, Joshua was in the in the building, in the house. Yeah. So that is that is. Lethal Weapon. So, when I walked out of a preview screening, I knew this was going to be a hit, big hit. It, it's it's definitely going to be on, like, when we do the top 10 for 1987, it's definitely going to be on my list for top for one of my top 10 of 1987 films. Definitely. So, it is, it is a near-perfect film. It's an action movie, but it cuts deep in terms of psychology, emotions... Um, a actual character development between the yeah. two characters. So, remember that time, ladies and gentlemen, where it didn't matter the skin color of the characters. You know, you were they were hired based on the, like they were best for the role. How Murtaugh, the character of Murtaugh himself, was never written with the skin color in mind. So they hired the best one for that role, which happened to be Danny Glover. Didn't fucking matter. And when when a when something's mentioned in the script, it actually bears out later on in the movies. It's not just a throwaway line, it actually comes back. Remember that chat? Remember there was no fucking mystery box shit? 
fuck you, J.J. Abrams. No mystery box shit or anything like that. It was If a line was said, if something happened, it meant something. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that is Lethal Weapon, ladies and gentlemen. So, next week will be Lethal Weapon 2 as part of the 1s and 2s. And uh, I'll let Warren Chat to go over the singles when he does his outro. But thank you all for hanging out with us. We don't cover everything that happens in the movie. There's a lot more that does happen in the movie. But I would recommend, if you have not seen the movie or if you haven't seen it in a long time, just rewatch it because it is worth watching. So... Warren Chat, let everybody know about the singles and where else they can find you and all that fun stuff. Okay, so singles this w- or this month are The Accountant with Ben Affleck, uh, J.K. Simmons, Cynthia Dye Robinson. Uh, also, next week is going to be From Paris with Love with John Travolta and John Reese Myers. Um, both are great movies in their own ways. The Accountant happens to be one of my favorite movies because it is a or it is an extremely original and unique movie, uh, even though it has a lot of the action trope in it. But we'll get into it when we get into it tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, Friday, you all know where to find me at 10, 10 p.m. on my channel for the Uncensored stream. Sundays are my weekly recaps, and Tuesdays are my theme streams, which Terminator franchise, I give all my thoughts on all the different ones. And yeah, then Wednesday, it's back for Lethal Weapon 2. Thank you, and as far as where the birthday cake cake is, it's downstairs. So I did have a little bit of birthday cake today. Nice. So... Uh, but thank you all for hanging out with us uh, tomorrow. Obviously, I will be on Orange Chat's channel talking the accountant, so that'll be about 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Friday, normally I stream. I normally do a gaming stream, but because I have to wake up early the next next day, or like you know, um, I'm just going to do a watch party on my Discord. So if you're part of my Discord, uh, tune in for that. Uh, hopefully, it will start at about no later than 7:30 p.m. ish time frame, and I'm planning on doing a watch party. Of the movie Back to School with Roddy Dangerfield and Robert Downey Jr. and so forth. A movie that would not be able to be made today for multiple reasons, but um, back, uh, Jay, well, back to School. I don't know if you've seen it with Roddy oh, Dangerfield. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., but a movie, like I said, that for multiple reasons would not be able to be made today. And if you have not seen it and you want to watch it, you'll quickly understand why. Vietnam teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Quickly understand why as you're watching it. So I'm going to do a watch party of that. This is my Discord. So uh, about, like I said, hopefully no later than 7.30 p.m. Friday evening. Saturday evening will be a gaming stream in the evening uh, on my Twitch, most likely playing some Helldivers 2. I got to make sure Cowman will be available for that or make sure he's awake, be awake for that. But Gigawatt... Uh, and uh, John uh, John Connors, I know, is down for it. So we'll be bringing democracy to the bots and the bugs. Um, if it wouldn't be made today, I'm sure it's going to be great. So, yeah. So, I'll be showing it. Yeah, for Liberty. Yes. For Liberty, Jigawatt. Saturday evening. And then Sunday, um, I have to talk to Steph to see if Talk Nerdy is still happening. Because she... It would be basically the tail end of the uh, Vegas trip. Uh, that uh, little Vegas gathering for most people. Um, so I'm not sure about talking nerdy to us on Sunday ap- Sunday afternoon, but definitely Sunday evening we'll be uh, returning to Halo Reach, playing on Legendary. Um, uh, Sunday evening, yeah, it won't be a hell of a diver stream without killing Kamen. Oh yeah, I go. I al- always try to kill Kamen. Here, I'll show you guys. Um. Where is the DM? See if I can. Can I? Hold on. Let me put it in my Discord. Maybe I can uh, download it through my Discord. So I don't want to dox my DMs. Yeah, he started. He's starting to uh, like adapt pretty quickly. He's starting to adapt pretty quickly. Send 
gaming section. No. Where is it? Okay, come on, where is it? Cause because Twitter for won't allow you to download videos. For some reason. Oh, here it is. Let me see if I can download it. Pause. Thank you. Okay, just to show you chat. So I don't know if you've seen this orange chat, but just to show you, this is what I do. So for those who uh, are on, who don't know the game that well. Where's the volume? Making sure the volume is... Okay. Uh, there's always like an evac ship that comes down when you're done. And you that's how you that's how you leave the planet. Alright. Okay, so this is what I always do. Or at least I try to always do with Calman. Oh, American Ninja's rating. I'll be calling it to, but thank you for the host. 13. Die, you little bitch. Thank you. Oh, shit. That was good. Check it. Oh, fuck you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. I had my gun ready and everything. I was waiting on your ass. Shit. You and your skittles. Not quick enough to pull that trigger. Apparently not. <laughs> I make it. I make it a goal to try to kill to kill Cowman. For Kickstarter. You're evil, For Kickstarter. woman. Yes. You are evil. I actually go out of my way to commit friendly fire. Wow. It's like fuck you, man. It's like, <laughs> it's like wow. He, he said that, and he was like, "What they killed? Like what killed me was the fact that he was actually ready for me to do it, and I was just quicker on the trigger." <laughs> uh, should be doing D and D Sunday, um, because the the campaign that we're doing, or at least the mission that we're doing, requires all three of us. So uh, we should be doing it next Sunday, because uh, but it also kind of all depends on um Lady Gravemaster, because she's returning from the Vegas trip, and she's oh. driving like eighteen hours, so, so it kind of depends on hers. Hey, Wiley Dave. I hope you enjoy the replay because we're uh, kind of wrapping up here. But yeah, but I will be playing um, D&D on Sunday. And then if that is like a, for those who uh, have like don't I like, haven't followed me on either Kick or uh, Twitch. Like I said, I play play Hell Divers Two and uh, Friendly Fire. Like it's basically for I like joke semi joke for ten kick subs. I'll shoot Cowman in the game in the game. So basically, like you know, it's like you know, send me ten like kick subs and I'll like. I'll basically take out Calman when the evac chopper comes down. But anyway, so yeah, so that is uh, at least through Sunday. We're uh, what to expect as far as streaming schedules go. Uh, also, but again, Friday evening, no stream because I, I can't stream in the evening. So I'll be doing a watch party of back to school. So if you were part of my Discord and want to like join in for that, uh, and you just jump into the watch party uh, voice chat, and I'll be uh, basically streaming the movie through uh well a streaming site like so we'll fi i'll figure out like where i can uh stream it from but anyway yeah uh, while well, i did thank you yes i did have a good birthday thank you very much and again hope you enjoyed the uh, replay and back to mass effect on mondays and this is my twitch so thank you again everyone have a good rest of your day or evening wherever you are in the world and we will see you all tomorrow at the very earliest for a discussion on the accountant so, right. peace, everyone. Stay humble. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.